What's up, Days Tagler Nation? Welcome to another daily download. Sorry for my hiatus yet again, but it just keeps happening. But today we are back, and it is a good one for the daily download. Today we'll be talking about E3. Yes, the E3 convention is well underway, kicking off yesterday, June 12th, and we are rolling into today, June 13th. On today's daily download, we will cover only the EA, Bethesda, and Microsoft press conferences. Now, I know there's going to be multiple press conferences, so make sure you tune in tomorrow for the next level of press conferences that we will be covering for E3. Let's dive right in. We'll start with EA Games. First and foremost, for the EA Games, news-wise, Titanfall 2. Big things coming about this game. This is the first time it'll be available on Xbox One, PS4, and PC, whereas before it was exclusively an Xbox game. Uh, the platformer game is expected to debut October 28th, and they are fixing one major issue with the original game, and they're giving you a grappling hook that allows the players to quickly traverse the war zone. Uh, trailer you can find on IGN or, of course, YouTube on the EA account. One of the most highly anticipated games that were supposed to come out of EA games was Mass Effect Andromeda. One of the games that we knew little about heading into E3, and we came out of E3 still knowing not too much. Uh, what followed was no information of the cast of characters, timeline, or gameplay. It was simply a cinematic trailer, which tells just one thing. Mass Effect, Adronima, isn't close to being complete at all. Uh, there's a good chance this game will debut in 2018, but that's technically a stretch. For those of you that are EA Sports fans, FIFA 17 will be getting a story mode. The journey will follow a fictitious up-and-comer named Alex Hunter as he rises to soccer ranks of a global superstar. It's no secret that EA now is the Star Wars game maker. They are the guys that have the Star Wars rights and they are making the projects for us. So, coming later this year, DICE will release Star Wars Battlefront content that includes areas from the new Star Wars films, as well as Star Wars The Old Republic MMO is also getting a new content to celebrate its 5th anniversary. Then, an all-new Battlefront game is coming in 2017 from DICE. Looking even further into 2008, an all-new Star Wars single-player game from Visceral Games will release. Uh, this is also a Fable Star Wars title from the Uncharted veteran Amy Henning. Listed on EA's site as Beyond, meaning Beyond 2018, Respawn, Titanfall, is working on a new third-person action game for the Star Wars universe. That's literally all they've given out information about, but it's supposed to be a new Star Wars story in the universe of Star Wars. Lastly, coming out of EA Games is Battlefield 1. It closed the show out in Los Angeles, and even after the press conference ended, EA continued to stream the Battlefront 1 content and its star-studded lineup including Jamie Foxx, Zac Efron, Snoop Dogg, Terry Crews, and several other actors and actresses. The popular first-person shooter will take place during World War I, and players will be able to pilot bioplanes and even zeppelins. Yes, zeppelins. EA showed off massive destructible environments and dynamic weather, uh, and Battlefield 1 will be available October 21st of this year. So, yay! That's one week before Titanfall 2, and both games are set to be released before the next Call of Duty game. So, bam. EA kicking ass. First coming out of Bethesda is the Skyrim's Remastered. It's a special edition, and honestly, it's not much of a surprise. Uh, but it's a welcome addition to their lineup for this fall. And during the conference, uh, they announced that Elder Scrolls V Skyrim was being remastered for the new lightning systems, textures, and updating features for the Xbox One and PS4. The new version also includes a completely integrated mod management system just like the one they released for Fallout 4. It's coming October 28th. Uh, if you're a big fan of Fallout 4, the obvious announcement was made that there will be new, 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 new DLC that will be coming, which will include two more Wasteland workshops and on alongside a new story DLC called Nuka World. Uh, while the two Wasteland workshops editions are certainly uh, disappointing, namely due to the fact that one of them is currently a mod, uh, Nuka World will certainly look interesting due to the theme park-like focus of the DLC we saw in the trailer at E3's conference. They also announced the game Prey. Uh, they revealed the new title from the Arcane Studios team here in the United States and built off an old property that never saw the light of day. Prey 2 is the new title from Arcane, set in a futuristic world of 2032 where players can, can take control of Morgan. Fortunately, that's about all we know coming out of this conference. Uh, they've decided also to move into the world of virtual reality, announcing that for uh, PS4, Doom's virtual reality experience only featured a quick tour of hell. 
They surprised us all with a Fallout 4 going completely VR come 2017 on the HTC V on the HTC Vive game platform. So that's something awesome to turn and look through the world of Fallout 4 through virtual reality. Then the big one, Dishonored 2. Uh, they ended their show with this huge gameplay and engine footage from the game Dishonored 2, courtesy of Arcane Studios. Uh, it built it in a br brand new game engine design specifically for the game called Void. Dishonored 2 follows Empress Emily Caldwin and Corvo Atano as they seek an to uncover a conspiracy which caused them to lose their throne. And that would wrap up Bethesda's E3 conference coverage. Here we are at the last press conference we'll be covering in today's daily download, and that is the Microsoft press conference. First, they announced that in the next two years, there will be two new consoles, the Xbox One S and Project Scorpio. Microsoft has fired the first shot in a new set of console war. Sony's expected to announce an update, more powerful PlayStation 4 at a later date, but this morning, Microsoft revealed its own plan, uh, or should we say plans. The Xbox One S will be available in August and is a traditional, uh, a traditional improvement upon a game console midway through its life cycle. Thinner, smaller, larger hard drive, you know, the whole nine yards to make uh, shitter look really good. Uh, Project Scorpio will be the beginning of Microsoft's initiative to extend the life cycle of a console, or at least its games, indefinitely. This is a theoretical future. Microsoft will release new and better hardware with greater frequency, but old Xbox One games will work on the new hardware as well. There's that uh, backtracking gameplay we've been dying for when it comes to consoles. Uh, Xbox is also going to give you the ability to play anywhere you want to play. That's anywhere. Xbox Play Anywhere. Uh, the majority of the upcoming games developed or published by Microsoft will be playable on Xbox One and Windows 10. So if you buy a downloadable game on Xbox One, you'll be able to play it on the PC. Crossover, baby. Why not? Microsoft's been on a PC for a while. Why couldn't I do that before? Just saying. Xbox Live gets clubs. Clubs are a persistent group of Xbox Live friends that exist both on and off of Xbox One. Rather than form a new party each game session, a club is essentially a voice and text chat room that can be entered and exited at will. The text chat isn't limited to the console. It will also be accessible through the PC and Xbox Live mobile apps too. For those of you that were hoping for this new game to come out in 2017, State of Decay 2 does exist. The wildly ambitious State of Decay always felt like a dry run for a big budget sequel. Well, at E3 you got your first look and you can check it out on the Microsoft YouTube or IGN.com. Another game was revealed at the E3 conference called Recore, uh, and it's kind of Microsoft's Metroid. So that is, this is their answer to Nintendo's popular game. Uh, they announced Recore last year with a short cinematic trailer, uh, and then no news came out whatsoever. Um, no gameplay, nada, nothing. Uh, but it appears the game creators got a lot done during that full year when they announced it, uh, part by some of the folks who updated Metroid for Nintendo. Uh, so look for Recore coming out to consoles soon. Uh, Forza Horizon 3 and Gears of War 4 appeal to fans. Uh, Microsoft hired the franchise's long producer, Rod Ferguson, to run the revamped Vancouver studio, The Coalition. Uh, the result of this decision is the Gears of War's games that looks very much at the place of the franchise, more so than it did 2013 with Gears of War's Juggernaut. So, bam, changes are coming. Uh, Halo Wars 2 beta is playable starting today, though the game will not be released until February 2017. So there you have it. Not really a funny, humorous daily download, but hopefully an informative one as we cover E3 coverage here on the Daily Download with the Dace Man. Check out all our videos here at youtube.com slash Dace Man Show. Go give us a like over on Facebook, The Dace Man Show. Follow us on Twitter, you guessed it, The Dace Man Show. Follow me on Twitter, at The Dace Man. Uh, and then finally, go give us a little heart over on Twitch, twitch.tv slash The Dace Man and Friends. And if you missed everything that I have said, go to thedacemanshow.com, where we will have up-to-date news on all these topics. So for the few, for the proud, for the Dacetacular, thank you guys for tuning in, and I will see you tomorrow with more E3.